So let me just start clarifying something from the previous video. The reason we don't want to use regular window sprinklers is because they rely on the window being closed fully and we want to find a solution for residents to be able to fully open their windows and ventilate on hot days. If you wanted a deviation solution to not having to use fire resistant windows, a window sprinkler would most likely work for you. However, with these type of sprinklers, the window can't really be opened as they rely on water being sprayed directly onto the window to cool it down. So we're trying to find an alternative solution to a window that can be fully operable. We need to think the worst case scenario where the window is completely opened up. This would result in a window sprinkler to just shoot out water through that window and lose most of its effect. So instead we're looking for a sprinkler head that has a water curtain like spray pattern protecting the window from afar and not actually touching the window. Anyways, since the last episode we've been meeting up at university consistently and writing technical fire related information to get the thesis going, but other than that it's been very little done towards the experimental side just yet. So we gave a call to Tyco, a sprinkler manufacturer, to hear if they'd be interested in testing one of their sprinklers for this use. Johnson Controls, Tyco. Yeah, hi. Uh... As they were quite understaffed, they asked if we could send them a mail instead, which we did, but they also said that it might take over a week before we get a reply, so the conclusion to that mail is still yet to be known. We also got invited by Kiva, a technological institute out on Calme, to look at different types of sprinkler heads in use. We gladly accepted the invitation, of course, as it sounded like a great way to get more familiar with the subject, and also sounded like a fun time away from studies. Are you ready to see sprinkler? Yeah, I'm ready to see the water. The first sprinkler we were shown were the Tyco WS window sprinkler. This is a sprinkler head with a bulb that expands the vapor inside the bulb, which then explodes, letting water flow out the head and onto a plate that guides the water in a spray towards the window, creating a film of water and protecting it with high fire resistance for about two hours. The second sprinkler that we tested was an Issue B sprinkler from Tyco, which we mounted in a different orientation than it was created for and managed to get a water curtain-like spray pattern, very similar to how we wanted for our experiment. The flow between the lower and the upper part wasn't quite consistent, but reducing the pressure levels would make that work. The biggest downside here was that these were deluge heads, so they couldn't really be used for our use case scenario. So, for people not really knowing what a deluge system is, let me explain real quick. There's a few different kinds of sprinkler systems that works in different ways. A deluge system uses pipes that's not pressurized with air and have open heads which are usually activated through smoke or heat detection systems. Once activated, the water will freely flow to all heads instead of just the area where the fire is detected. This makes them rarely, if ever, used for residential use, but rather for high hazard areas such as aircraft hangars and power plants. For apartments and such, you usually want a sprinkler head that has a heat reactive bulb that explodes, allowing the water to flow through on that one specific location. Taking a deluge sprinkler head and putting in one of these systems would not work, and recreating a deluge head to be fitted for this use could cost millions of research and development, so we're looking away from those altogether. So, one head that could work is this one, a horizontal sidewall sprinkler that's again mounted in a way it's not supposed to be mounted. We weren't that happy with the spray pattern and would love to see something more like the deluge sprinklers that we tested, but we thought to have this as a backup solution and hope that a sprinkler company replies to us with a better solution soon enough. Our advisor also showed strong skepticism towards this head being used for our use case scenario, so we're gonna work very hard to try to find a better one. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'm sure by the end of the next episode we'll know which sprinkler head to use and we'll start getting ready to start burning stuff. And if you're interested in becoming a fire safety engineer, you should apply at Western University of Applied Sciences here in Haugesund, Norway. Otherwise, have a good one.